Ciao, Bella. I am Oceana Fortuna, and this is the Breathe, Love, and Magic podcast. We'll talk about a magical mix of mystical methods, including everything that works to live your best life, grow spiritually, and maybe find love. Open your heart, expand your mind, and connect with spirit to embrace the magic that is all around you. If you enjoy the show, please give it a thumbs up or write a glowing review and subscribe so you'll know when the next episode is available. And may good fortune come to all those who listen to the Breathe, Love, and Magic podcast. And now, on with the show. Today's topic for the Breathe, Love, and Magic podcast is Feng Shui for Love. Are you looking to attract love into your life? Or maybe you're already in a relationship, but you want to keep the romance alive or spice up your sex life. Here's how feng shui can help attract love or create more romance in the bedroom. First, let me explain what feng shui is about. Some elements of this ancient Chinese art date back as far as 6,000 years. Feng shui is the practice of creating a harmonious flow of energy. By thoughtfully placing furniture and other accessories in or around your home and avoiding items which can be draining, You ensure a smooth flow of energy and attract good fortune all at the same time. That's just what you want in the bedroom too, right? Much of feng shui originated for protection and safety. For example, if you were to sit at a desk in an office, you would want a clear view of the door and you want your back to the wall. This is called the command position, which ensures you could see if an intruder were to approach you and you wouldn't have to worry about the safety of your back. That is the basis for many of today's feng shui rules. Here's how you use feng shui to attract love or spice up your sex life and create more intimacy with your partner. I'm going to go through 11 different suggestions. Number one, position your bed. The best place to position your bed is with the head against a solid wall while having a clear view of the doorway. If possible, avoid having the foot of the bed line up directly with the doorway because this would allow the good energy to drain out of the room. What is considered ideal, according to feng shui, is to be able to see the entire bed from some sort of side view as you enter the room. In addition, it's best not to have a window directly behind your bed since that also allows the good energy to leak out. If you can't avoid the window behind you, be sure you have a strong headboard. Sometimes you don't have a lot of choice, so for these two suggestions, just do the best you can. Number two, clear the clutter. Now, of course, sometimes we just get sick of hearing about this one, but clearing the clutter is always a good thing to do. If you want more romance, intimacy, and attention in the bedroom, the feng shui remedy requires clearing away all distractions. That means getting rid of those piles of papers and books. It's also time to say goodbye to loads of stuffed animals or too many pillows all over your bed. The reason is to make sure there is room on the bed for you and your lover. You don't want to give the universe the impression that there's no room in your bed or life for love. Also, it's important to have the space space beneath your bed to be open and free. So if you have storage bins with clothing and other stuff under your bed, try to find another place to stash them. This space needs to be clear so nothing stops or blocks the energy flowing freely beneath you. Number three, eliminate electronics. If you're hoping to create a warm atmosphere for better sex, get rid of all your electronic devices. Okay, you can keep your clock, but if you must have a TV or computer, etc., tuck them away in a cabinet. Why let any attention slip away to video games or dreary news? Not in your boudoir, babe, right? Number four, create balance. To promote balance in the bedroom for great sex, 
be sure to have the same nightstand on either side of the bed. You want them to be equal in size so neither of you has more energy or advantage than the other. Feng Shui basics suggest that you don't push the side of your bed up against a wall. Instead, leave plenty of room to walk around comfortably and for the nightstand on both sides of the bed. In addition, keep the drawer in one of those night tables empty if you're single. That creates room energetically for a partner if you don't currently have one. You can also create a little space in your closet. Maybe you can squeeze out a couple of inches or and in the medicine cabinet in the bathroom. Going this extra mile sends out the message that you are serious about attracting love. Number five, choose the right art. If you want to create an inviting space for intimacy, Feng Shui encourages you to choose your artwork thoughtfully. Go for peaceful landscapes or calm water and ocean scenes. Avoid any artwork that depicts violence, brewing storms, or discord because that energy would be brought into the room and affect the two of you. You want to promote love, not war, right? Take this a step further. Feng Shui suggests that if there are people in the art, make sure it's not a single woman or one woman, which would reinforce independence and being alone. So if you're looking for love, you don't want any pictures or paintings or photographs of one woman alone. Instead, look for paintings or prints that feature couples or pairs of items to promote a healthy relationship. Surprisingly, your bedroom is not the place for family photos, showing other couples or even your parents. Focus on you in this private sanctuary if you're hoping for some hot loving. This story perfectly illustrates the impact of your artwork. One of my clients did this survey of her home and discovered she had a painting of a single butterfly above a field of flowers in her love corner. And we'll get to the love corner in a minute. She had always treasured this piece of art because of the symbolic message of independence. She loved it. Once she realized, though, that she had been sending out the wrong message, she quickly replaced the art with a piece of that featured a pair of birds because, in fact, she did want to find love and she did want to attract her soulmate. She didn't realize that that single independent butterfly was sending the wrong message. So this still allows the freedom of flight since she would show a pair of birds, but with two birds quietly nesting that depicted relationship. Number six, create a love corner. What is a love corner? The art of feng shui uses a map or grid called the bagua for your home to assign energy to every area. There are nine areas set up like a tic-tac-toe board, and you can imagine it fitting over your home's floor plan. These areas include things like money, helpful people, health, and love, plus some others. Today, we're only talking about the love corner. Finding your love corner. In the Bagua, the top right square represents the love corner. So determine the room that exists in this area if the front of the house is at the bottom of the nine squares. Imagine standing at your front door and looking to the far right space of your home. A more traditional manner for determining the location of your love corner would be to use a compass. Look for the southwest corner of your home and even in each room. That's where the love corner is positioned on the Bagua from a traditional standpoint. You can take this as far as you like, but it isn't necessary to focus on every single love corner in every single room. You might decide to concentrate on the love corner of your main floor and of the bedroom or just do the bedroom. But focusing on the love corner of your bedroom will definitely get you results. Now, what goes into the love corner? Select items for your love corner that symbolize couples in love and project a feeling of happiness. This is like creating an altar or special space dedicated to love and relationships. Give careful consideration to what decorations 
represent love in a positive light for you. Be creative and use your imagination. Here are some suggestions for what to include. You might have a small framed piece of art or a card with happy, passionate lovers from myths, movies, or literature. A pair of candlesticks with pink candles. While candlesticks often come in pairs, frequently people are inclined to spit, split them up and put something in the center between them. While that looks wonderful, it's not the best feng shui. See this symbolically. Do you want to be separated from your partner? Of course not. No way. So place those candlesticks next to each other like a pair or a couple. Also, be aware of size. While it might look better aesthetically to have two different size candles together, for the best results, the pair should match. Don't tip the scales of power in your relationship by having one candlestick larger than the other. You might also have pairs of small stuffed animals or figurines like lovebirds. Any animals will work as long as they are a loving pair. Just so you know, you can actually find lists of animals that mate for life. Believe it or not, like coyotes and eagles, if that feels right. Or simply pick a pair of your favorite animals, something cute, two bunnies, two seals, two birds, whatever it is. You could also use a photo or drawing of sweet animal pairs. You might have flowers in the love corner. A vase with fresh cut flowers is such a nice touch. Flowers add beauty and life and vibrancy. Keep in mind, you want to remove them immediately when they start to deteriorate. Some people prefer silk flowers for this reason, and they never need water. Another suggestion is anything heart-shaped. You can find glass paperweights, heart-shaped boxes from candy, a wood or metal trivet, Christmas ornaments, and more. If you're single, another great item to place on your love corner is to write a love note to your future lover or partner and talk about how much you love them right now. Create this in the present tense like it's already true to give you the most impact on the energy and then put that in your love corner or on the altar. Another item is a glass, pottery, or silver plated ring holder as the perfect spot for your upcoming engagement ring if you're sin if you're single and if you're married it's a great place for your wedding rings now we can talk about crystals i love crystals <laughs> any pink crystals will do here so you might choose from rose quartz pink calcite uh, rhodochrosite rhodonite kunzite they would all help you attract love and bring more loving energy into the room and magnify the love that is already there now, depending on the size of your love corner, you might include some heart-shaped pillows or pillows with hearts on them, or you might have um, like door pillows. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but they, they're little stuffed pillows and they might be in the shape of a heart and they have a cord that hangs on the doorknob. The other suggestion is to think of your altar as a living energy. And so you might want to feed that energy and feed your altar. When you put something sweet on your altar, you are sweetening up the energy there. When Valentine's Day comes around, you can find chocolate hearts in red foil, which you could use to feed the energy of your love corner all year round because you don't need to eat the chocolate. You just put it there as an offering. Put one out or two, put them together, right? And um, you might unwrap them or leave them wrapped and then change it out every week. And if you have pets, just be sure that they don't get access to that. Um, you don't want anybody nibbling at that chocolate. So these are just some examples, but be creative and see what comes up for you as well. What comes to mind, whatever makes you happy and is positive reflection of love will most likely work very well. Now, let me tell you about my love corner when I was manifesting my husband. It just happened that my love corner was in the love corner of the home and the bedroom simultaneously. And that's where my night, my night table was too. So I had it easy and I placed the following items by my bed. I had a red beaded heart-shaped change purse, a pair of glass candlesticks with long pink tapers, a Christmas ornament that was a pair of 
white lovebirds side by side, pink silk roses in a small silver vase, a small plastic toy of Aladdin on his magic carpet, accompanied by a small figurine of Esmeralda from the Disney movie Hunchback of Notre Dame. I found them at a uh, flea market and I positioned her right behind Aladdin on his flying carpet. And a thick glass heart-shaped dish for jewelry or candy or a candle. That's quite a silly arrangement of things, I have to agree. But each and every item stood for love and its qualities in my mind. The Aladdin toy with its magic carpet and Esmeralda figurines represented my desire for a magical love. And the idea of being swept off my feet. Allow yourself to be lighthearted and whimsical as you determine the objects that will decorate your love corner. Have fun doing this. You can keep it simple or set up a creative vignette, whatever suits your style. Since my love corner altar was set up on my night table, I looked at it at least twice a day when I woke up and before I went to sleep. Spending a bit of time with your symbols helps focus your intention and energy, and reinforces your desire for love or for fabulous intimacy. And this sends a message out to the universe. Feeding your altar with chocolate or cookies is part of this idea to keep the energy building. One interesting client story. Allison's love corner was not near her bed, but on the other side of the bedroom. She was a very private person. So even though she didn't have a lot of company, she didn't want anyone to see her love corner. To keep it out of sight, she used a large standing screen to cover the area. Unfortunately, that sort of backfired energetically because she was actually hiding her love corner and limiting the energy rather than allowing the energy to build. I convinced her to remove the screen and within a short time, she started meeting men again. So very exciting. This stuff works. All right, that's all about the love corner and we're ready to move on. Number seven, empty your bookshelves. Whether you're hoping to attract love or in a relationship and feeling like you're not getting quite enough attention in the bedroom, look at your bookcase if you have one. Is it crammed with books you're going to read or you already have read? Find another spot in your home where you can put the majority of your books. A few books are not a problem, but a full bookcase, that full crammed bookcase means your needs are filled and stacks of books can be a major distraction. Reading represents mental energy and will definitely take away from that romantic feeling of your bedroom. Use the shelving to display a few decorative elements instead that support your desire for love and for attention and intimacy. Number eight, remove energy drains. There are a number of additional things that could potentially power down the energy and passion from your bedroom. For example, if you have a master bath doorway that's easily seen from your bed, keep that door closed. The last thing you want is for your love and libido to go down the toilet. Energetically, that's exactly what happens. Unfortunately, another thing that's not great are dried flowers. No matter how pretty they are or sentimental, they're dead. And so that definitely diminishes the life force in the area around them. That certainly won't do for the love corner for love or sex. On the other hand, fresh flowers add vibrancy and life force and silk flowers contribute color, texture, and beauty. Just move those dried flowers someplace else. One of the essential feng shui rules is to never hang a mirror in the bedroom. With its reflective powers, the energy bounces all around, causing restlessness and intensifying worry or stress. Being practical, you want to be able to see how you look in your clothes. So hide that mirror behind a door or inside an armoire if possible. At the very least, be sure you can't see yourself in the mirror when you're on the bed. Another feng shui basic is to avoid sharp or pointy objects. Anything like a cactus, which is prickly, or even a sculpture or lighting that has lots of spikes or angles, that will agitate the energy flow, not something that will promote sweet lovemaking. A stopped clock, 
represents a stoppage of time and energy. Nothing is moving. That's not the energy you want in the left corner either. Keep things moving by replacing the battery, winding the clock, getting it fixed, or moving it to another room. So if none of those options are possible, you might want to rethink having that clock or placing it someplace else. And it doesn't matter if the clock is in the love corner or not. If it's in the bedroom, all of these rules apply. Number nine, banish your ex. According to Feng Shui Basics, one way to extinguish the mood in your bedroom is to hold on to gifts from your ex. If you're with a new lover, don't let old gifts, photographs, or other mementos hang around. Pack them away, or better yet, toss them or give them away. This is also true whether you're single or with someone. You don't want stuff from your ex hanging around in the bedroom. If things didn't work out, why allow that energy to stay in your boudoir where there's intimacy and closeness? Start fresh and allow the energy of new love to build and blossom and flourish. Number 10, appeal to your senses because that's sensual. Set the mood by playing sultry music. If you're planning on a night of intimacy, you might enjoy jazz or acoustic guitar. Whatever you prefer, music sets the tone. This is also true about lighting. Candles, with their flickering dim light always create a highly romantic setting and can cause desire to rise. Adding fragrance is another great way to appeal to your senses. You could wear perfume or light scented candles or use essential oils. Good choices to amp up your intimate activities are sandalwood, neroli, and jasmine. The more senses you appeal to, the higher the desire and sex drive will climb. Number 11, a black hat feng shui. If you want more passion with your lover in your relationship, here's a little known trick from a sect of feng shui called black hat, which is a very westernized version of feng shui. Place a long red ribbon ribbon between the mattress and the box spring of your bed. Now, if you don't have a box spring, it could be between the mattress and the platform that holds the bed. And put it on your lover's side of the bed where he sleeps. This will increase his passion and energy naturally and improve the connection between you. For the best result, let this be your little secret so your man doesn't feel uncomfortable or manipulated. Then watch things heat up and sizzle as you enjoy a better sex life like the one you dream of. One more client story. This is actually not my story. It's my friend Krista's story, who is a feng shui practitioner. She told her client to buy a pair of men's shoes and put them in her bedroom closet. She was looking for love with the right man, and that was one of the things she did to promote finding somebody and the love that she was dreaming of. Um, I've also heard about this idea of buying a pair of men's slippers and putting them in the closet. Anyway, Krista's client did this, and then she forgot all about it, but she had those men's shoes in her closet, and months later, she started dating a guy, and one night, he needed a pair of shoes since he had only brought his sneakers to play tennis. Believe it or not, the shoes she had fit him, and he wore them. Isn't that amazing? There's something to this feng shui energy, and then (laughs) I got to tell you, she married that guy. All right, in closing, this really just scrapes the tip of the feng shui iceberg. With increased popularity and awareness of this ancient art, there are numerous books and online classes as well. While some get incredibly complicated, others provide all sorts of cures and things that are simple for whatever energetic imbalance might be in your home. So my suggestion is to look for simple language. Look for something that's easy to understand. And there are plenty of great examples on how to harmonize your home's energy and flow and that of the love corner. There's definitely something to this ancient art of feng shui that's sure to rock your love nest right away. It really works. 
Have fun. Thanks for listening today. Don't forget to like this episode if you enjoyed it. Write a positive review if you feel inspired. And subscribe so you never miss an episode. I'll have more about love and magic next time. Until then, this is Oceana Fortuna reminding you to share your love and seek magic every day.